Hey guys, I decided to make a new video here, and after multiple requests of using this build in public lobbies and with my friends, it's going to be about Rogue. Some of these things, right off the bat, this build is going to be doing. You know, trying to be elusive, making flanks, DPS output, survival, and of course dodge. Armor gating. So to furthermore with what we was just talking about, I like to show and point out things within the perk deck. So Houston is a character in the game that, you know, is able to count from 0 to 60 perfectly. Or able to time 0 to 60 perfectly. I believe he works on car engines. And that same thing is reflected onto his, you know, perk deck. Like that perfection sort of style. The perfectionist is what I, you know, was meaning to get to. So he's, you know, a stealthy criminal capable of sneaky tricks in deadly force. Versatile and deceptive. The rogue is hired to do anything from pickpocketing, burglaries, and con jobs. The rogue's trademark is his versatility. What he lacks in strength, he makes up for in skill. Um, for more of the experienced players that are in the community that, you know, actually will, you know, put experience into the dodge builds, they can agree with the very last statement of the rogue build being, you know, what you lack in strength, you make up for in skill. In my personal, you know, opinion, the rogue build is more of an experience-based thing. Yes, your your dodge statistic is an RNG factor, but you as the player are not an RNG factor. You decide where you stand or if you crouch. You decide if you run or if you walk. You decide if you peek or if you don't. You decide how many people you peek and how, you know, where you peek. You decide if you crouch when you peek or if you stand when you peek. You decide if you have suppressors on or threat level. You decide if you have high concealment, low concealment. You decide if you have, you know, optical illusions or, you know, playing against against your teammates or playing with your teammates. There's, you know, multiple things that play into factor when you're actually talking about a dodge build. And in this dodge build in particular, the only things you really bring to the table inside the rogue perk deck is dodge, playing off of your teammates, some more dodge, a little bit more dodge. And then you weapon swap speed plus that 25% chance of an AP round being with inside your clip. So with these being, you know, your cards inside your deck, something that you don't really need to focus is actually, you know, just dodge. Because your perk gives you such a high amount right off the bat that, you know, you could grab, you know, more survival based things is what I'm getting to. And before we get too far ahead of myself, some of our base statistics will be right here. We'll have a 60% dodge when standing still or playing passive, 70% when sprinting. Our base health will be 230, and when we grab a Joker, it'll increase us to 299, not making a difference in the amount of you know shots that we can tank for 225, but it'll allow us to you know have a more HP to heal from so that we're not just at 5 HP we've got a bit more HP that we can work with and hostage taker will take more of an effect now to go into the skills here as I was just explaining hostage taker rogue does have passive you know play you you know you're running around the map playing elusive not I'm not referring to the you know playing off of your teammates when I say elusive I'm you know referring to playing elusive as of like trying to be sneaky making flanks attacking your specials trying to help your teammates out like with you know group killing because you as the rogue yes you do make them get targeted but you can use it in your benefit to help your teammates if you're using that in the sense of you know to kill something for them so that they aren't dying that's beneficial and something like hostage taker will be able to you know be useful to you since that you are not going to be targeted all the time you're going to be able to have a chance to heal yourself back up. That HP increase from that 30% will put us at 299 as I just explained. Basic stable shot. We'll be using shock and awe ace since we don't actually have a specific weapon for shields. We're using the stagger ability. Bullseye basic. Alternatively, you could be acing this skill to, to work around the grace period effect in the perk. And I'll be furthermore on that grace period effect here in just a moment. Die hard for that damage reduction on interacting since you as the rogue are meant for objective plays. The die hard is going to actually, you know, play really good for you. And that extra passive reach in. 
scavenger for my ammo. I go for body expertise basic, surefire ace, lock and load, and fire control. The reason why I go for these is more hidden inside of the silent killer tree, which is inside here. The professional is what I went ahead and aced for that accuracy bonus for my weapons. Now with this accuracy bonus, with that stability, you're going to be able to hit heads, you know, easier. So the body expertise ace isn't what I needed to really go for. But as you see here, I go for Optical Illusions Ace for, you know, a bit more concealment. You could alternatively also grab concealment for your inner pockets. This will also, you know, help your sneaky bastard and your low blow percentage. I go for Dire Need Ace. This is something that it can be used universally in a lot of builds, but is more seen in a dodge build. It's nice to bring, you know, stagger skills to stagger enemies. Something like Dire Need is going to, you know, really play a factor to you since when your armor breaks, the first shot on every enemy will cause them to stagger. So you as a rogue, or you as any type of dodge build, when your armor gets busted and they shoot at you, well, it's going to stagger the enemy. So, like specifically the rogue, with the armor region that you've got in this build, that's not gonna, you know, as you see here, it's not gonna stop until your armor's fully recovered. Um... That's going to be playing factor for you. Since you as a rogue, when your armor gets actually broken, your grace period comes into effect until it's fully regen. This can help you. Same thing with Bullseye Ace. That'd be able to help you with fully regening your armor on an instant. And that's actually it inside this build. And as I mentioned a little bit earlier, DPS output. We go for, you know, these three skills. We got this for our specials, so we can run up on shields, tasers, medics, dozers whatever the case is and have you know max crits on them and then we've also got body expertise surefire uh, light units heavy units shields basically your weapons in this build can vary from anything that's really concealable honestly what I'm using in particular is two guns that have about a thousand fire rate both both of them sitting at about 40 you know six damage both of them, you know, about 50 to 60 accuracy and 96 stability on the both of them. Both being pretty concealed, sitting me at a concealment value of 3. The actual weapon that I went for was the Clarion as my primary. That really isn't needed, but that minus one concealment did not really, you know, play against me, so I went for it. And I don't use a sight, so. Alternatively, you could grab other things that have high fire rate, like, you know, the vector, or cross vertex, I should say. Um, I'm sure you could fit the, the Krenkoff into this. Cobra, the Copus, the Mac-10, or Mark-10. I'm sure you could fit a lot of these into this build. I particularly have just went for the, you know, Micro Uzi. It's more of the more broken SMGs in the class. The, uh primary weapon is more of the clarion but you could go for anything that has low concealment the car for your jp36 if you you know were to lower the concealment a bit also the deployable i'm not too sure why it was a medic bag just a moment ago but i tend to bring an ammo bag but some of the other things that i'll be switching to inside this build actually four first aid kits will be the alternative that i will be switching to Concept that I don't want to overstep in this is your 70 dodge, you know, concept real quick. You peek 10 enemies, you dodge 7 bullets, you get hit by 3, and we're talking damage of 225. 1 to your armor, 2 to your HP. It takes as little as 3 bullets to kill you in the rogue build. So, limiting my exposure is, you know, really what's going to keep me alive inside the dodge, you know, factor of my survival. Uh, as you'll see in some of the clips you know here in just a moment so we get questions all the time like this for dodge right here at the bottom left um little did this you know viewer know was i was 
running dodge this whole stream practically as I have been for you know weeks and months and you know show Bro, so on and so forth. We was just running a dodge build. Two, we've been running a dodge build throughout this like whole stream. Just confused. <laughs> I really was confused. Was really confused. <laughs> I was like, what the hell? I was like, really? I was like, has he not been watching it? <laughs> but I don't know. Either way, let, let me get to the point here. Um, here, here is more of the, you know, clips that I wanted to, you know, show. This is a, you know, flawless rogue. Um, zero down the diamond, I'm pretty sure. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I take health damage like twice. Something that I mentioned previously and you know my streams and something that I may have forgot to mention just a moment ago inside of the uh right there. You throw someone that doesn't know what they're doing in the in the in you inside the rogue, they're just gonna be you know killed left and right. Someone that has a bit of the you know, knowledge and experience in the game, you throw them into the rogue build, they're gonna be able to make use of seventy. As you noticed, I peaked three enemies right there. 70, 60 dodge is going to do a lot. Right there, I was peeking three. Got hit once. So notice the exposure. Notice that was one. In, that was a 1v1. That's a 1v1. So you notice how both of those 1v1s dodged both the bullets. Right here, it's a 1v1, a 2v1. Got two people peeking. Right here is one person peeking. As you see, if you limit your exposure... And limit the people that I'm fighting. You can see how the dodge is going to keep me from getting touched. We're talking about something irrelevant to the rogue build. We're talking about something that was a subject on the stream being um, stealth. It was irrelevant. <laughs> it was irrelevant, I promise. Hold on. It was, it was completely irrelevant. Right here is a good description because I peaked a bunch of people exactly um something that I meant to forgot to mention is the 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 rogue being you know the perfectionist if you make mistakes that's where you get you know health damage occurred if I make a mistake and get shot to my health that's on the player not on your dodge you from the player have you know full control of what you're doing that you like it doesn't really matter now it's only going to be really an issue when you know you're in like a sniper build maybe also something else i want to explain in rogue is when you take health damage usually is from oh there it is mistakes because you've got fucking 70 percent dodge How oof <laughs> you know <what> <laughs> how are you getting it though like god damn Every s that'd be my luck though, honestly. That would be my luck, man. It'd be like, damn, dude, I fucking got lit up. But something that I'm going to put into perspective real quick, just as an as a FYI, um, because I d I did put it in perspective inside this you know stream. But if you have seventy or sixty dodge and you peak ten enemies, about seven or six of them are going to be dodged, while the other three or four are going to hit you. While being inside of the rogue build, you know, you've got 230 HP, 20 armor. That's three shots and you die. If it's 225 damage, of course. Um, the three bullets that hit you out of those ten are enough to kill you. Something that you need to, you know, physically play towards, basically, is limiting your exposure because as you just now understand... Some of the more experienced players, that is how they will be playing. And it may not be something that is a secret that's usually told amongst the, you know, community. If you're limiting your exposure like this. Like, I'm only peeking, like, a few enemies at a time if you observe and watch this full, you know, thing. Like, I'm, I'm only peeking few enemies at a time. 
making you know my, my 60 or 70 dodge be pretty powerful but i'm also using life regen life increased armor regen a little bit of optical illusions you know suppressors a whole bunch of you know mix of things instead of just purely dodge because as i explained dodge isn't going to keep you alive and that's not your main source of survival neither And this was a, you know, I shouldn't have stood right beside that kingpin there. That's why I tried to stay hidden, like, in out of side of the dozer site, so that I wasn't really affecting the, um, the targeting. But I try to, you know, stay away from my teammates' majority of this, you know, mission. So here was another clip. This was just yesterday on my stream. It was a full carry, I'm pretty sure at two parts during this thing. So right here, like as I was explaining earlier, you got to work with your team sometimes. Like as the rogue, my other teammates may not necessarily be able to run out as I'm doing right here and be able to make the plays that I'm doing right here. Um, this was given the opportunity to me. So I was able to, you know, jump into it and allow my teammates to actually make a play here. As you see, I'm able to take out all these enemies so they're no longer, you know, hitting my team. They're moving finally. Uh... This is a really long one. I'm pretty sure it lasts like 20 something minutes. But as you see, I'm going for heads. Right here, I didn't actually trigger the bullseye, so I had to start hiding. So after some time, we uh, we made it finally to the containers. Uh, you know, teammates, I think both of them get downed right here, if I'm not mistaken. We get a guy to join. Um, it becomes a solo for, you know, the wave. Something that the rogue, you know, is able to fully capable, you know, of doing. Once again, you'll have to be, you know, noticing the exposure, how I'm limiting myself to certain enemies. Don't worry, the other guy wasn't too far behind. As I explained in one of my stoic videos as well, like most experienced players in the game have, have been in a situation like that. And right there, that health damage, that was a mistake by myself. There should have been a flashbang tossed out. I should have, you know, shot at somebody that was peeking me. There should have been some other action instead of me just sprinting straight out there. I should have done something else. But as you see, you know, I, I fixed the issue immediately and got, you know, cover. But the, the issue that, you know, arose there was I peaked so many people and all I did was just run out there and run back. All I solely relied on was just dodge. Isn't something you want to solely rely on. And here, as you see, we get our whole team back. Uh, maybe one of them stays in custody because killed civs, maybe. But this isn't the only instance of this, you know, happening. I also want to, you know, 
show some of the downsides of Rogue is you harming your teammates. I don't know of any recent clips. But any time that you play towards your team in a Rogue build, you are prone to getting your teammates, you know, shot at. So right here, they both were prone to getting shot at while I was within their, you know, sight lines. Not, not my teammates' sight lines, but the, the cops' sight lines of me and them at the same time. They will get targeted as a bigger percentage. So as my teammates getting healed right there, I tried to cover as the rogue. Just because, you know, they are the ones being shot at anyways. So I might as well, you know, use that opportunity. As you see, as, as throughout the whole thing, I'm going to be limiting my exposure the whole time, limiting myself to the amount of enemies that I'm fighting. Most often than not, the moment my armor gets broken, we're going to be jumping into cover. Once again, welcome in everybody. Uh, the few times that I peek things without H or armor, I should say, is if I've got a full per you know circle of HP. If that's not the case, then I'm not going to be peeking you know in certain cases. The, uh, this one drags out a little bit, but I know if we fast forward a little bit here, because this one does drag on for a little while. Oh, I should have showed the push. I'm gonna, I'm going to show the push. I'm sorry, guys. Oh, still not the push, I guess. This is the push right here. As the rogue player, I was pretty monumental in this push. I had to position myself in you know certain areas to be able to you know effectively handle certain enemies and draw them away from my team, as you see here. Be be the one who looks vulnerable in a position, but then my teammates were ever you know able to cover my ass. But that's not always the case in Rogue. Like, I have enough, you know, DPS outage. It was just in that specific situation. It was the only way that we could profit is to, you know, jump in different, you know, positions like this to alleviate the certain angles on my teammates, as you see. Like, I'm up here doing a solo push just so my teammates can, you know, stay alive in the back. But as the Rogue, like, I'm fully able to achieve all of this because of 70 dodge armor gating, you know, a joker positioning... The dozer was doing fucking ring around the rosy on me, spinning around and shit. That one guy over there by the car scared me, but then he walked off. That's why I use the poison knife as well. It does quite a bit of damage. I may not have killed him, but I got a couple of good stabs on him, so I definitely dealt, you know, a decent amount of damage to him. Now, I'm not saying the rogue's the only one that can, you know, do what I'm doing here. The the rogue and or any of the dodge will be the ones being able to maneuver throughout the cover and maneuver throughout the area like that. While some other things that can do similar things to that would be like the anarchist, the stoic. You'd be able to hold them all off like that and be able to, you know, sit in particular spots to get them, you know, away from your team. Or have the angles be changed for your team. I need a joker. And that is something that this build relies on. As, you know, I did forget to mention earlier, um, joker is one of your, you know, most reliant things in this build. You do rely on a joker more than anything. You don't have a joker, you don't have life regen. If you don't have a joker, you don't have something else being targeted. This does have solo capabilities as well. It's meant for a zero down build. Man, I had so much trouble getting this guy actually. I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward this. I had I had so much trouble getting that guy. But as you see as the rogue, like I'm very knowledgeable. So like I'm able to do, as I was explaining earlier, like hold the angles that make it seem like I'm a vulnerable target, but I'm also, you know, holding off all the angles for my team because I'm pulling them all back. My teammates are right here. So I had to make the push still because they're in armor uh, and an anarchist. I think we had, you know, some not so 
maneuverable teammates. Now, the Anarchist could, but he was, I think, more of a squishy Anarchist, like a one-shot armor busted. As you see, I'm usually the person that's like right on top of people who get, you know, downed. It's just my nature to heal people, but I, I shouldn't sometimes. It gets me killed. And I would uh basically come nearing to the end of this video here. This is, you know, the practically the end. And this should be a what not to do in Rogue. Um, you'll see some, you know, obvious issues here. I was being targeted and just not moving, you know, I was just being targeted the whole time. Uh, exposure was, you know, becoming bad because I just started to expose myself to bad angles here in just a moment. These are things that are, you know, you shouldn't be doing in Rogue. Like, I was attempting to, you know, play to a different angle, but what, you know, actually happened was I peeked too many people and, you know, it instantly got me downed as you see here. And then that, that was the end of this try. You know, that, that right there failed us all. So, so what do you take from, you know, this clip that we just showed? Um, understand the play that happened. Like, you got to see the, the limitations that, you know, the people that I exposed myself to, the play that I actually do, and how the whole team fell apart due to the play. The rogue is in this situation currently. I was the only person capable of, you know, maneuvering the map and being able to, you know, pull people away from my team here. So as I was attempting to, you know, pull that play, some of the things that happened was I got put to, you know, like 5 HP. I attempted to grab a Joker. Situation got all bad, so I had to, you know, I had to heal. One of the bad situations that you should never really do is this, but this med was going to get left behind, so I was going to heal myself on it. My next priority was to get a Joker. Knowing my teammate was going to be able to heal that guy, I was, you know, going for the Joker. And this is where the whole miss, you know, play starts to happen. I was so focused on my Joker and blinded by, you know, what we should have been doing was pulling the, you know, enemies away from my team. But then when I realized the situation again, you know, I, I make another misplay and I'm sitting in a spot getting, you know, exposed the whole time. And then, you know, what happens right here is I go to try to make the play again, but it's already too late to make the play. I've, you know, it's not perfection anymore. It's going to be a, you know, lucky if you can even make it sort of situation. Like, as you see right here, I'm getting exposed by so many things and pure luck at that moment. But that was a, you know, a demonstration of how you would not use Rogue in this situation. Um, face tanking is what I'm, you know, referring to. Like, I'm sitting in a spot just getting shot. I'm, you know, running up on enemies and just getting blasted. In this situation, like, I'm the only teammate that could really make a move here, so I made a move. Like some of this, like this was one of the fails during the um, the heat street runs that we did. And uh, if if any of the players are trying to learn from Rogue, watch and observe, you know, this part of the you know video. This will show you some of the issues that I'm you know arising in Rogue. Like my teammate was running to me, so I needed to move. He needed that cover more than I did, so I needed to jump away from him. I had full HP. His armor was depleted. Like these are the things that you need to be micromanaging inside the Rogue. You need to be, you know, prioritizing some of your teammates' survival, too. But this should be the end of the video, guys. If you did, you know, like the video, um, possibly subscribe, comment. I would appreciate it.